We're here in the middle of Vienna, in, the, in front of the Soviet War Memorial, which was set up uh, as a result of the Soviet occupation of Austria. And it looked as though the Red Army would never leave, as it didn't leave you know, East Germany for, uh, for more than 40 years. But in 1955, they decided to leave but their condition was that the, uh, the city of Vienna would maintain a perpetual monument to the heroes of the Soviet Union. And you can see on the, um, uh, on the inscription there, it starts, Vichnaya uh, Slava, in other words, eternal fame, eternal glory to the heroes of the, of the Red Army. What, what do you think would be the implications if they did t take it down? Well, that's interesting. I, I think that the Russian Federation is the, the guardian of the Soviet legacy. Uh, we don't know. I think the Austrians take good care to respect the treaty. In addition to being one of the stars of motor car history, the Willis Jeep was the symbol par excellence of liberation. All the films about the Western Front in 1944-45 show British and American soldiers rolling in their jeeps through the liberated towns of France and Italy, waving to the crowds and being deluged with flowers. You know how to drive it? Uh, I've not driven one for 40 years. <laughs> we boys had these pictures in our heads and we undoubtedly gained great confidence from the feeling, or perhaps the delusion, that we too, as we rode through Europe in our jeep, would be welcomed and fated. No one in those days questioned the myth of Europe's complete liberation, and no one in the West knew much of the Soviet-style liberation of Eastern Europe. American Lend-Lease Jeeps had been commandeered by the NKVD as the chosen form of transport of Stalin's agents of oppression. Actually, it was meant to, to work for approximately six months. Right. That was the average time they uh, estimated it to, uh, to be used in combat, in battle. So, actually, every six months they had to replace a jeep that was meant for it. But this one is also, well, most of them, they are yeah. built between 1940 and 1945, something like that. And actually, Still no, it's a little bit longer than six months, but they estimated it to work. <laughs> Only slightly. Okay. Thank nice you. Nice to meet you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. And there was a long time, but it was finished. Good day. For kinder. I'm a terrible amateur. Real player, yes, he's much better than me. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we won't keep you. All right, Wiedersehen. Thank Wiedersehen. you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Just the end of the road here is where the Iron Curtain was until uh, 1990. Uh, before that, it was the frontier between Austria and Hungary for centuries, but the Iron Curtain was built right across Europe. Um, the first time the world heard about it in those terms was in your country, Pavel. Winston Churchill made this famous speech. He said, from Stettin on the Baltic to Trieste on the Adriatic, an Iron Curtain has fallen across Europe. One thing I very much remember uh, here in this last Austrian village, there was no signpost saying Budapest. So we kept going, and then suddenly there were the watchtowers, and there's the 
Soviet tanks and everything. It was. And what kind of reception did you get? I think they knew we were coming. I'm certain the Soviet intelligence would have people in these villages looking out for vi unusual vehicles or travellers. But of course they didn't prevent us from going in. They wanted us to enter, then they could find out who we were. So we, naive and stupidly, rolled on. I was talking in French to this Russian who just started laughing because he also couldn't understand. <laughs> I had uh, passports and um, uh, motor insurance papers and he, he took these and he looked at the insurance paper and he just tore them into pieces and threw, the, threw it all in the waste bag. And we paid a lot of money for that insurance. But w once we had crossed in that side, we were entirely in their power. We, we had fallen into their trap. So they lured us on. I can see now it happened. Ev every mile or two along the road to Budapest, there was a Soviet soldier who stopped us. And then he, he had a little field telephone and he, he would phone to the next soldier saying, isn't it? American jeep coming double. So it looks like some World War II. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, first aid things. That's right, they're Ameri yeah, American. Samochody is Czerwonego Krzyża Wojskowe. Oh, hey, there's the flag. To jeszcze, jeszcze. Troszkę dalej. Troszkę dalej. Looks like a military base. Czy możemy się zatrzymać, żeby. How old are you? I'm 19. 19? Uh, I was 19 when we, when we came here. And you have just finished school? Yes. Did you volunteer? Do you, are you a willing soldier or you, do you have to do it? I have to do it. You have to do it, right. I remember that there was a control in Austria. And then there was a no man's land, which is the Nietzsche. I potem te betonowy, przeciwciągowy zapory. Tu się skończył normalny świat i tam był inny, zamknięty, nie wiadomo co. Polen, Frankreich, England. <laughs> Here's my zone. Uh, yes. Amerykanie, England, Polen. Meine Frau ist äh, aus Polen. Mit, mit Auto? Auto, ja. Ich 50 Jahre äh, hier äh, ja. war. Ja. No. Und äh, Nikolsdorf, Norman Davis. <lacht> Auf Wiedersehen, danke schön. <lacht> Ta, staruszek stracił dwie żony, więc jest sam i zobaczył młodą panią i to. My zostawimy Hanią na dwa tygodnie, ten pan zaprosił i... <laughs> One of the sad facts about the Iron Curtain is that it reinforced the ignorance of each part of Europe about the other. Westerners were led to believe that all the countries of the East were small, primitive and colorless. Easterners were led to believe in all sorts of fictions about life in the West, which was supposed to be uniformly rich, orderly and contented. Panie Profesorze, z jaką historią wiąże się to miejsce? Już nie pamiętam. <laughs> For a long time in history there were two cities, B Buda on the left, uh, from the citadel, and then Pest on the right. Buda was Turkish, Pest was Hungarian, and then the 19th century they joined together to create a new city called Budapest.
60 years ago, uh, we came round with our Jeep. Of course, there wasn't this exhibition. We somehow got to the t up to the top there and we were looking over the city. And I still have the one photograph that we took before the uh, Secret Service men appeared in a car, four of them. And it was a hot day like today. And we were in shirt sleeves and they had these leather coats on. So we realized there's something odd about them. And they came up to us and they said, Ah, oh, lads, you know, where are you from? So we, we said, Oh, from Bolton. Said, oh, Bolton, where's that? Oh, it's, it's near Manchester. Ah, Manchester, what a beautiful city. We must go and have a drink to Manchester. So we stupidly agreed to go. <laughs> they took us into a bar where there was a, a restaurant, there was a gypsy playing uh, in the music, and they brought a uh, glasses, uh, I, I think champagne, and the last thing I remember was drinking this champagne and listening to the, uh, the gypsy playing and then nothing for 24 hours. <laughs> and I uh, remember waking up outside Budapest, uh, lying on the, the ground next to our jeep and uh, a Soviet um, escort at the end of the field waiting for us to wake up and then they took us out of hunger. This is Saba. To jest Dunaj. To jest Dunaj, a zaraz zobaczycie Państwo piękne ujście Sawy do Dunaju. Tak. Jesteśmy w najstarszej części Kalemegdanu, gdzie i Rzymianie. I Celtowie byli, bo w wykopaliskach można odnaleźć. Tak. Celtyckie, celtyckie. Jest tutaj Celtowie w ogóle założyli, nazywało się to Cindy Duk. Jasne, zawsze nie trzeba tej filmu. Doku, y, film dokumentalny w filmie. Dokumentalny film, co jest prawda? Kamy, kamy. Co możemy zrobić? Co Jest problem przez to dlatego, że tu nagrywane rozmaite różne telewizje, potem to wykorzystywały dla propagandy pokazując Serbię z negatywnej strony. My dosłownie jesteśmy tutaj 10 minut, nie, 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 10 minut, a nie dłużej. Zrobiłam z pana noblistę. No, mało. No, ale tutaj ale jest symbol, to jest symbol. No. Wie, więc ja zrobię cyny, więc dlatego się zaśmiałam I ekonomii. I ekonomii. Belgrade means white fortress. White is in stone, but many different Conquerors and civilizations have been here from the, the Celts and the Romans. Uh, the Slavs only came in the 6th century. Um, and then Serbia was, was created and medieval S Serbia was, was very powerful. And the, the biggest white fort, stone fortifications are medieval Serbian. And then came the Ottoman Turks and they uh, made this one of the biggest fortresses in, in Europe and the Turks were here until the 18th century then came the Austrians and the 19th century a small independent Serbian kingdom was created with a local dynasty uh, and that kingdom was the basis of the kingdom of Yugoslavia after 1918. When I was here exactly 50 years ago, Yugoslavia was very well viewed because um, Tito, the Yugoslav dictator, was a communist trained in Moscow, but he'd broken away from Stalin. And a lot of people in the, in the West thought that communist type socialism was, uh, was good news. Yugoslavia fell apart over 15 years. When the Soviet bloc collapsed, Yugoslavia was left with a federal government in Belgrade dominated by Milosevic, a, a Serbian nationalistic communist who decided to try and keep Yugoslavia together by force. But in Yugoslavia, there's this terrible series of wars which went on for 15 years. 
the key to the, these wars was Serbia, the largest of the republics, which was not prepared to allow the others to declare independence. And there was a terrible war in Croatia. Uh, then it was Bosnia and Herzegovina. And I think it's a big scandal that uh, the European Union, the European nations, couldn't decide to get their act together and, and influence the situation.